Hello everyone and welcome back to our Wednesday night study on Psalm 119. Uh, today uh, we will be studying verses 145 through 160. Uh, psalm 119 is a psalm that praises God's word and the psalmist uses a lot of repetition to sort of uh, elevate God's word. Uh, it's a unique way of constructing this, the psalm, along with the practicality of the content. Uh, it allows us as Christians to easily identify with the psalmist's writings. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and dive into the scripture. Uh, psalm 119, verse 145. I cry out with my whole heart, hear me, O Lord. I will keep your statutes, I will cry out to you. Save me, and I will keep your testimonies. Uh, so here, uh, the psalmist begins by laying out the framework uh, on the seriousness of his current situation. Uh, when we cry out to someone, we typically want to be heard quickly so that someone can resolve the situation. We also see the psalmist announce his allegiance to the Lord, that he will keep his statutes and testimonies. Uh, notice he says that he is crying with his whole heart. Uh, meaning he's truly committed and not simply doing this just because it happened to be an opportune time. Uh, and lastly, the psalmist is focused on keeping God's testimonies after getting out of this rough situation. Uh, we read in James 1 that we should count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Uh, so we'll move on to verse 147. I rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help. I hope in your word. My eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. Uh, we see here that uh, he is up night and day meditating on God's word. In this current situation, he chooses God's word as his number one priority. In Psalm 5.3, David says, my voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord, which describes a God-first mentality at the start of each day. By doing this, we should feel God is always near to us. We have Colossians 3.7 that states, Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. We should be ready to work for the Lord in all that we do each and every day. Okay, so now we'll move on to verse 149. Hear my voice according to your loving kindness. O Lord, revive me according to your justice. So we see in Lamentations 3 that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. And the psalmist knows this and needs God for encouragement during this time. Note that he's asking for God's justice and not his own thoughts on how justice should be handled. How many times throughout the Bible do we see man making decisions without consulting God's word? There are too many to count, and it would be foolish on our own part not to consider these examples in our daily life. Okay, we'll move on to verse 150. They draw near who follow after wickedness. They are far from your law. You are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. Concerning your testimonies, I have known of old that you have founded them forever. <clears throat> So we see here that those who are wicked or, or are his enemies uh, are near, but the psalmist states that God is also near. He is on God's side, but the enemies are far from God's law, according to verse 150. And we see in Romans 8.31, it says that if God is for us, who can be against us? So nothing and no one should be able to separate us from the love of God. The psalmist also says, the Lord's testimonies are to last forever. We can read in Luke 21, 33, where Jesus says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. The psalmist, the psalmist uh, mentions this is not something new and sees over time that God's promises are true and everlasting. Okay, verse 153, Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Revive me according to your word. Here we see the psalmist asking for God to consider this great sorrow 
that he has shown obedience by not forgetting his law. As Christians, we're going to face afflictions many times throughout our life. Over time, we will look back and see that these afflictions or trials helped us grow and we were able to build endurance and a greater confidence in living for the Lord. Romans 12.12 12 says to be patient in tribulation and pray continually. Okay, moving on to verse 155. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great are your tender mercies, O Lord. Revive me according to your judgments. Many are my persecutors and my enemies. Yet I do not turn from your testimonies. I see the treacherous and am disgusted because they do not keep your word. Here we see the psalmist discuss with those who are wicked because they do not seek God's statutes and every step they take towards evil puts them in further and further away from God. Uh, John 14 and 15 reads, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. When we are disobedient and seek to please only self, we are not showing love towards God. But even with so many enemies, I'm sorry, uh, but even with so many enemies, the psalmist affirms that he will not turn from God and still focuses on God's testimonies rather than turning to the idea of revenge or repaying evil for evil. Romans 12, 17 says, Repay no one evil for evil. Verse 19 then says, Do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In verse 159 and 160, Consider how I love your precepts. Revive me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. The psalmist is concluding these verses by again stating that he loves God and is dwelling on the sureness of the truth of God's word. Isaiah 40 and 8 reads, the, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. God's word has been true since the beginning and will be until the end. He has kept his promises from the beginning until now, and as promised, he delivered us a Savior for all mankind in Christ Jesus. Thank you.